I'm Andrew Phillips and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install peel and stick backsplash tile. Let's go ahead and get started. These are the items that we'll need to complete this task. First you're going to need some kind of a multi-surface cleaner, one that we can use to clean the wall real good where we will be applying these peel and stick tiles. Next you're going to need just a rag that we can use also to wipe that cleaner once that's sprayed on there. You're also going to need a screwdriver, whether it be a flathead or a Phillips, depending on what your receptacle plates are held on by. You'll need that to remove those. You're also going to need some kind of a cutting tool, some kind of a blade that we can use to cut out or where the receptacles need to be cut out or just to cut at the corner of the wall. You're also going to need some kind of a straight edge. For this, I just have a, a steel sheet that I'm going to be using, but if you have a, a ruler or some kind of a nice straight steel edge that you can use to ride the blade along to cut that. Also, you're going to need some kind of an applicator, whether it be a credit card or some kind of plastic squeegee or some kind of an applicator. And basically, that's for when the tile is applied. You can use it to just kind of press out any air and just really get a nice firm bond. You're also going to need a measuring tape. And then you're also going to need your tiles. The particular ones I'm using for this video are by art3d.com. You can get these through Home Depot. I'll put the price along the bottom. But you can get these at Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, different places like that. And then this is what the tile looks like here, the peel and stick tile. It's very thin, just a little bit thinner than a piece of, uh, of paper, really. But you have the backer here that you'll peel off and it has the adhesive on it. And then on the front, you have a clear coat here that we're going to leave on until we're done using this to apply it, that way we don't damage it. Once it's completely adhered to the wall, then you can go ahead and then you can peel that off. But let's go ahead and start prepping the wall by removing the receptacle plate so we can start spraying it down and wiping it and start getting down to business applying these on the wall. I'm gonna start by removing the receptacle plates. We're gonna take all of those off. Then we're gonna go over the whole wall before we actually clean it. There's some little imperfections, maybe with the last time it was painted, or with any of the caulk along the edges. We're gonna go ahead and clean off any of that that needs to come off, that way it's a nice flat surface. So let's go ahead and start removing these plug receptacle plates and then we'll get a close up and I'll show you what we're gonna do as far as removing any of the imperfections. Coming along this wall here, you can see here's an imperfection right there. Let's see if I can focus in on that better. Basically, I guess when the wall was painted, a little glob there, so I'm going to just take a blade and trim that off. And then coming back here, we're just going to go over the whole wall and just make sure that there's no imperfections before we actually get ready to spray it and wipe it down. So that's all clear. And then also this stove is going to have to be pulled out so that way we can get behind it. I'm going to bring the blade and just go right along with the wall and just remove that, that little glob. nice and flush so that way it doesn't give any area for the tile to not be able to properly adhere. Okay, that's good. I'm going to go around and clean up any of the other ones like that. We'll be right back. Next, we're going to pull this out. Pull that away from the wall. That way we can get back there with the panels that need to go back there. Just pull the oven out gently. Now that we've gone ahead and removed all the imperfections, pulled the stove out, now it's time to start cleaning the wall. We have our multi-purpose cleaner. I'm going to go ahead and spray it on the wall, then we're going to use this rag and then wipe it down. So what we're going to do is start off here, we're going to go ahead and spray it on. Go ahead and spray it on. You want to make sure you get any grease grime off. You don't want that to be causing any problems from the tile sheet adhering. Everything has been wiped down, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and let it dry. And then we're going to start laying out our first piece, and then we'll start working our way around. And then we'll then follow up after that and add any trim 
like there's some spacing here. The sheets that I'm using, they're actually 12 by 12. This is a little bit higher than that, so then we'll come back and add whatever filler pieces we need to, to fill those gaps, and then that should wrap it up. For our starting piece that's going to go at the end of the counter, you want to make sure that you make your cut on this staggered side here. You don't want to cut off on this side because this is where you need to do the overlap. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make a line. We're going to measure that out just enough to cut these off here. And I'm going to use my straight edge. So we're going to kind of come right here and cut it right there. So we'll go ahead and line that up. Then we'll take our blade, cut that off, and then we're ready to mount that. Go ahead and use your credit card or squeegee to apply it nice. And you want to make sure when you made the cut that you're cutting off the side that's staggered and not this flat side, because this right here has your overlap section. So now that that's done, everything is nice and secure. We're going to go ahead and make a template around this. So what I'm going to use, we're going to go ahead and use the backer that we peeled off of this. And we're going to go ahead and lay that out and make a template off of that. So that way we can copy that onto the actual tile that's going in next and get a nice perfect cut. Okay, so I went ahead now. We made that template. We cut this next tile. So now if we put the tile here, the way that it's going to overlap is these staggered pieces go in these overlap sections. So it'll apply like that. We've cut it nicely around here. It'll be a nice perfect fit. So then the plate will go over and then it you apply these correctly, it'll look, you won't even see the seam. It'll be nice and smooth. I'm going to get the backer off of here. We're going to start laying it on and then apply this sheet so we can keep moving. We're going to peel the backer off like we did on the first one. You don't want to peel it all off at once. You want to take it off probably about halfway so that way you have some some leverage still to work with. And now that that's on there, you want to make sure that this is removed next. So we're going to go ahead and remove that plastic film. Now that we've gone ahead and applied that sheet. So we're going to take this and gently lay it right in there. Place them in with the proper spacing. Okay, looking good, looking good. That one's on. All right, there we go. So now we can apply that. We can start peeling the backer. And as we peel it, we'll be applying it. I want to make sure that you don't have what just happened here. You've got to be very careful here where the cut is. To apply it smoothly. Go across the top, that way you don't have any bubbling. And then we can come here, work that out. Apply that. And these are tricky when you're cutting around the receptacle because you're losing some of the support here. So I found that it's easier if you lay it on and then then turn and come down from the top instead of laying it the way we did the other sheet. We'll take our card, make sure this is nice and smooth, make sure that the connections are nice and solid, stretch that out, get that nice and, nice and smooth. Firmly press everything in place. Make sure all of that is 
tightly blended before you take the plastic off. I'm going to go ahead and remove the plastic now that we've got this one in place. Gently peel that back. Kind of go over it, make sure everything looks good, which it does, looks very good. So the next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and continue building this wall. And then we'll be back along the way to see the progress of it as we head towards the finish line. Coming up on another receptacle, so I'm going to take the paper that we pulled off the last one so we can make another template like we did before. We'll lay this out here and we can see where the receptacle is popping through so we kind of have the opening there where the, the uh, page box is. So we'll go ahead and mark that up so we can then cut around that. So we know from, we're looking at approximately two and a half, two and a half, and looks like about four. About no, four and a half, so about two and a half wide, four and a half high. So we'll go ahead and mark that up, cut that out, lay it out there, and see how it goes. Okay, so we have. We have the outline here, and then now we have the measurements. So we know that it's two and a half. So we're going to go ahead and mark that two and a half, and we know that it's four and a half high from that point to here. So four and a half, and I'm actually going to move it up a tad. So we've got four and a half, four and a half, then another two and a half in this direction here. So we're going to go ahead and cut that out, lay it out on the wall, and see if it matches it. Put it here, and it can only be right about there. So that looks pretty good, maybe shift it over a little bit to the right, and then we'll go ahead and cut out the, the actual tile. Using this straight edge here, we're going to go ahead and make these cuts, we're going to line that up, get our blade out, put 
that in there. This way. Make this cut. Go ahead and make this cut here. We'll just go ahead and just trim along these lines. this in here and beautiful beautiful lined up perfect let's go ahead and apply that so we can keep moving We're coming up on this wall here, and as you can see, there's the end of the wall, the corner. This is where it's not really tricky, but what we're gonna have to do is pretty much take a piece, go ahead and overlap it into that section there, then cut a straight line right into that corner, and then continue the other half of it onto this wall. So that way, when it's all said and done, it'll look like the tiles are just wrapping around, and then that'll take us on this next wall here, where we can start headed in that direction. And then we have a little strip to go underneath here. And then working our way here, we'll wrap around that wall. And then this piece here, and then that'll wrap it up. To get this corner exact, we're going to follow what we've been doing with the receptacle templates. I'm just going to use the backer that was peeled off of another sheet. We're going to go ahead and match it up right in the overlay section. And then get it right in that corner. I would like to say you could just measure it, but as we all know, builders are not perfect and the wall is not either. So we need to be able to compensate exactly for the wall. So we're going to go ahead and take this and line it up in there and we'll draw the line, make that cut, and then we'll cut the actual tile to match this template and that should fit perfectly. There we go. That's the right the right angle and you can see the top and the bottom are slightly different as far as in the the measurement so that's where measuring it would not have worked
this in. We're going to go ahead and take the other part that we cut. We're going to attach it here on the wall, coming up against it like that. And that will then have the wraparound effect and keep the pattern moving. So let's get that one on there. Went ahead and cleaned up in here, put these corner panels in, coming right around the, the window area here. You want to make sure that as you lay them out, that you cut a nice straight line. They should end right with the edge there, whether you're dealing with a window looking outside, or in this case, it's a window going into the living room. So that's all nice and clean. And what I have here is I kind of cut it around this molding on both sides. Now along the bottom here, this is going to be a strip of tile right here, kind of its own strip. It's not really going to match what's there because it's a little bit lower. But what I am going to do is paint this white. This molding needs to be white anyway, so we're going to do it now before we put the tile in. So that's what we're going to do now. Go ahead and apply a, a coat of white to that. And while that's drying, then we'll continue laying it on the wall, wrapping around, going towards the pantry. Everything has been painted here. We're going to let this dry before we go ahead and apply the strip of tile underneath. So while that's drying, let's head back here to the wall so we can finish this. Then we'll come back, apply that strip, and then do a little bit of a, a strip across the top all around to take it up to the cabinets, and then that'll wrap this up. There's the corner, all blended. You'll see here what I did. I went ahead and I cut a straight line on it using the uh, straight edge that I had, lining up here with the edge of the counter. That way it has a nice clean look. 
push all this down real good. Make sure we get a good bond. And let's see here. There we go. Okay, well now that this is all done here, we're going to go around now, and I'm going to get a, a closer shot underneath, but there's approximately a roughly one and a half to two inch gap between the top of the tiles, because these were only 12 inch tiles. So between the top of them and the bottom of the cabinet, so now we're going to go ahead and cut a strip to fill all that in and give it a nice clean look. Then we'll come back at the end and put the strip here underneath this molding, and that'll wrap this up. Go ahead and put the plate covers back on your receptacles. Okay, so I went ahead, cut that straight edge here so we can line it up here. So we'll take that, put it right up, go all the way up to the top, lay it out here, press that all out, line it up here with that grout line along the bottom. Everything here has been wrapped up as far as putting that extra strip along the top. I'll get a close-up of it so you can see what I did. The only thing left now is to put that strip of tile underneath the molding at the bottom of this window here. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and install that and then we'll just kind of do an overview and wrap it up. Here underneath this window molding, I went ahead and put one strip of some tiles there just to kind of give it more of a finished look. It adds to that, kind of completes everything. All right, well that pretty much wraps up this video on how to install peel and stick backsplash tiles. I hope this video was informative. I hope it helped you out. Please send me any questions, any comments. If you have any questions about everything that was covered here, I would love to hear from you. As always, I appreciate all the support, so please like this video, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time.